Hey guys, welcome back to the channel and today we'll be, re we'll be reviewing another budget 10 keyless mechanical keyboard. We just got this pretty recently from a company called First Player and this mechanical keyboard is called the First Player DK 5.0 Lite and we have Odamu Red switches. Let's jump right into the review right now. All right, so let's take a look at the keyboard. I have it right here next to me. It's been unboxed and we've been using it for the past several days. Now, before we begin, let me state that we did get this mechanical keyboard for free in exchange for a very thorough and honest review. You guys know how it goes. If there's something wrong with it, we're going to tell you. So let's jump into it. First of all, you can see that this is a 10 keyless mechanical keyboard. It looks very similar to the Velocifier TKL02WS that we reviewed back in the day when we were reviewing a ton of budget mechanical keyboards. It's very similar, but it does have some differences. For example, the wire here is non-detachable. It's not great. I don't like non-detachable wires, but in this case, it's quite slim and thin, and it doesn't really bother me as much as the really thick wires or the double wires that end with two USBs for USB pass-through, such as the Corsair K70 or the SteelSeries Apex 7 TKL. Those had much thicker wires. This one's relatively thin and you can get the kinks out of it pretty easily if you straighten it out and keep it that way for a while. However, one way that could be a problem is that if this wire breaks right here where it connects to the keyboard, that's pretty much it for the lifespan of the keyboard unless you're willing to desolder it and solder it and fix it up and make it all brand new. However, I don't think that's worth it for a keyboard of this price range to really try and make it last forever like that. On Amazon, this keyboard goes for around $50. Prices are always subject to change depending on time and availability, things like that. It comes with two switch options. I believe there is an Odamu blue option and an Odamu red option. We picked the Odamu red option and Odamu switches look very similar to KL box switches. They are dust resistant in the way that they're shaped that prevents dust from getting inside your keyboard and your switches and ruining them. So that's a plus side. The switches here feel very similar to Cherry MX reds. They're slightly scratchy, have a little bit of friction to start with, but once you get the hang of it, it's all right. This could use some break in period to get those switches to move a little bit smoother, but I don't really mind. They're good linear switches. They're pretty much Cherry MX red clones, except with the dust protection. So that's a bonus. In terms of the case, it is a all plastic build. However, it does have a metal top plate. There is no flex in the board whatsoever when I try to flex it. On the back, we see that it has four rubber feet and two kickstands with a rubberized coating at the bottom to ensure that when you're gaming and you're in the heat of the moment, your keyboard is not going to be slipping away from you when you start reaching for those keys really quickly. Another good thing. It does have a natural incline to it already. And as you can see from the side, this is a high profile keyboard. None of that floating keycap stuff that we've been seeing a lot recently. Dust is really not going to get in this keyboard. But if you have a cat like I do, there's probably going to be hairs in there, even if I don't want there to be. And if you look at the front, you don't really see any branding on the keyboard at all. But once we turn it to the front of the front, I don't know what this is called. You can see that there's subtle branding on the right side of the front of the keyboard right here. It says first player DK 5.0 light. Really subtle here. If you want to get rid of that, you can really easily with just a nice coat of paint. So subtle branding is a bonus for me. In the front, we see that there's the indicator lights for caps lock and scroll lock right above the arrow cluster. I like that. That's pretty nice. 
And the keycaps are ABS plastic with double shot injection that lets the RGB shine through quite nicely. But the font and the legends is something that I'm not a huge fan of. They're really gamer oriented and they have some disconnections in their lettering such as O, 0, 8, 6, and some of the numbers D, B, just things like that that really bother me. I prefer a more clean, connected look with all the legends. The keycaps in themselves are thicker than I thought it would be. They're definitely thicker than Corsair and Keychron ABS plastic keycaps. Those are very thin and flex very easily with little pressure. These are thicker than that, so I think they're a bit higher quality. With ABS plastic, you're always going to be looking forward to the shine that happens after a little bit of typing or a long bit of typing, depending on the keycaps. These don't really accumulate finger oil super quickly, and it's not apparent that I've even been typing on the keyboard for quite a while. They almost feel and look brand new. I like the texturing of the keycaps. They're not matte, which probably adds to the fact of why they don't look so dirty just yet. So RGB lighting, there is a ton of effects. To change the lighting, you press FN and insert, and you can cycle through the 13 effects that are pre-programmed onto the board already. And once you pick your effect, you can press FN and delete to go through the eight color profiles that you can pick for that effect. You can also press FN and one, two, three, four, five to go through any of those gamer profiles where only the keys that are lit are pertinent to the game that you're playing. Uh, I was editing with some of them, so they're not exactly what they should be. But for example, if you press FN and one, I think what was showing before was WASD tab and control and those will be the only lit letters so great for gaming at night you can edit those profiles to however you want by pressing fn and home while in that profile and then you just press whatever letters you want and to save that you press fn and home again i thought that was pretty cool and i was playing around with it for a bit to change the colors of the letter that you want you just press it over and over and over again until it lands on the color that you want Again, super cool feature that I really haven't seen in any other keyboard that we've used before. The secondary functions are on the top function row. You can see that we got the music player, volume down, volume up, mute, previous track, next track, pause, play, stop. And then we have some other functions such as email, home, internet, and calculator. Those open up different things depending on what system you're using but sometimes it can be pretty convenient to open the calculator really quickly, I suppose. To edit the RGB lighting, like the speed and the brightness, you're gonna press FN and up or down or right or left, depending on what you're going for. The stabilizers are cherry style stabilizers. They're all right, they're not, they're not that bad. They're not as wobbly Whoa, they're not as wobbly as a lot of big brand keyboard companies that we've uh, reviewed in the past. I think they're quite nice, although some of them are a little bit loose, so you can mod that really quickly by just lifting up the side of the stabilizer and putting some electric tape or a band-aid underneath that to tighten it in its slot a bit more and prevent more rattling. Overall though, they're nice stock stabilizers from the get-go. It does have a standard layout and a standard bottom row, so you can change the keycaps on this keyboard as you please, maybe to some nice PBT or ABS double shots, some other nicer brands. However, by doing that, you will be losing some of the secondary functions on the legends that are in the keyboard. It does have a manual separately, which really helped me understand some of the effects that were going on. So initially when we got this keyboard, um, I thought I was going to be spray lubing it and doing some mods on that. But unfortunately with the Odomu Red switches, they do prevent any kind of liquid and dust from getting inside them with the box design. That is a good thing because it's dust resistant. However, for us, that's sort of a, eh, there's not much I can do with this keyboard to make it better kind of thing. But overall, just from the factory, 
I think that this is a great keyboard for around $50. The only thing that I really don't like about it is the non-detachable cable. However, it's pretty thin and slim, so not too bad compared to others. I like their packaging. The box looks clean. The description and the branding is spot on. Very nice. I would recommend this for pretty much beginners who are wanting to get into mechanical keyboards but want a 10 keyless layout. They also sell full size keyboards if you're interested in that. But my favorite layout is 10 keyless. So I'm gonna recommend that if you're new to mechanical keyboards and you're looking for a budget keyboard, this is a really good one. If you're interested in more budget mechanical keyboards, we do have an entire playlist where we reviewed about 10 budget mechanical keyboards and ranked our top three. So check that out for over here if you want. Now it's the moment you've all been waiting for, which is the typing test. Take it away, Typing Betty. All right, so as you can hear, it does have a little bit of spring ping and a little bit of friction on the typing sounds as well, but that's not bad. You can break it in a little bit more and see how it feels for you. I'm gonna link you guys to our budget mechanical keyboard playlist right here, and then our mechanical keyboard ASMR playlist right here and subscribe here if you want to thank you so much for watching and thank you to first player for sending us this keyboard for review we enjoy it very much see you in the next one Poof.